Hey everyone, we're going to spend a few moments today going over our new curriculum book that we just finished. If you're not an in-house student, this might have very little interest for you, but if you love martial arts and you have an extra half an hour, please spend some time with me. We'll go over the book. The book is intentionally filmed from a bit of a distance so that the pages are kind of blurred and whited out. That's intentional. But if you just listen to my voice and the explanation, you can get the gist of what we do. You don't have to see every line in detail. So let's look at the dojo curriculum for 2022. All right, thanks for taking the time to join me today. And this book, this newly revised curriculum book, by no means covers everything that we teach here, but it's a large percentage. So for those of you out there who aren't part of our dojo, a lot of this will kind of go over your head because if you're not here physically training in it, a lot of it won't make sense. But for those of you who have martial arts schools or training clubs, you may want to adapt a few of these things into your curriculum book. Hopefully your dojo has a book of its own. If not, ask your teacher to make one. Most of the schools that I trained with over the years had no curriculum book. One or two did. This is the cover. I love this because of all the art that I looked at, this is the only one that really told a story to me. And I'm intentionally not showing the screen. I want to keep some distance just for copyright reasons. What I love about this is there's a samurai here. I love the art style. There's a little girl right here he's protecting. And there's a bad guy there if you can see in the distance through the snow with his sword drawn. This guy's got his sword drawn. It's very ambiguous. There could be several stories with this. Is this the little girl's father protecting her from this guy? Is this some little girl that off the street that he doesn't know that, you know, maybe that's an abductor or something like that? Could this be the bad guy and this be the good guy and the bad guy's got his daughter? There's there's ten ways you could look at this art interpretation and and see a story in here. That's what I liked is the second that I saw this, it it screamed self-protection. It screamed the samurai's ideal of protecting the self and those who are weaker and innocent of the community. This is what martial arts is about as far as a self-defense aspect. So I loved it. I loved the style of it. I created it up here because the art stopped there. Uh, of course, you have just a standard font here. This is our new core curriculum book, which I've been writing the last several months. It is 70 pages long, full of material. On the second page, we just have this represented with some notes because a lot of people ask for places to write notes about techniques and tips with a quote here by Musashi who says, you can only fight the way you practice. And we talk about this all the time, even last night in class. You have to give good authentic attacks with good resistance because when you get out on the street, if your dojo practice and fighting is poor, you'll do the same on the street. So we're always using that quote by Musashi. How are my attacks? Are they being too lazy or are they good? So right here, I wanted to try to give and pay homage to many of my teachers who are either not alive anymore or are getting very elderly or not training anymore or are just getting up there in age. So here's a cool picture of Hatsune, much younger, doing a huge kind of heel stomp kick. So this is our martial art curriculum for the dojo in particular, just for this school. It's not for any organization. This is my design in our particular school. Levels one through three, from white belt all the way to black belt. A simple welcome to the dojo for new students. Tells you about our dojo, what the purpose is, benefits you receive from training, all kinds of different things. Our training method, there's a paragraph on what our method is and why we believe it to be so effective in modern 21st century America. Here, page five, why do we practice martial arts? What's the purpose of it? People don't see through our videos how rich and full of depth this stuff is and how many decades you can take just to learn the basics. These are the benefits from our martial art training from the non-sport reality based. Beyond the basic training, what can I do when I take the classes? What's happening with my classes? Talks about martial arts skill, how it's a diminishing skill and if you don't keep up with it physically, it will go away. 
So you have to stay the path. You have to stay active in order to really call yourself a legitimate martial artist. What's the goal of my training? What's the dojo's goal in serving you And when you come to class? What's my goal as an instructor? We talk about the perfect, in my opinion, symbol of nin, the symbol of patience here and perseverance. What to do when things go wrong, when you start to encourage and encounter pain in your life, which is part of the reason why we train is to adapt to different types of conflict and pain in our life. The Dojo Student Creed, written by one of my teachers, Stephen Hayes, fantastic at building our confidence. We say this before every class. Doesn't matter what rank you are, rank is meaningless. And his 14 codes of mindful action, these are moral and ethical principles of the warrior that we work on here every single day in and out of the dojo. You can't just be beating people up in your dojo. You must, in my opinion, have wisdom behind it. You have to have tenets of morality and duty so that when you use your martial arts, you're not hurting other people. You're not making the world worse. You're making the world better. And these are aspects of our mind and our body and our attitude that we can change by looking at our thoughts and trying to train through the negative into the positive. This describes our belt ranking system here at the dojo, all the way from white belt up to 10th degree black belt. This will take you 30 years or more. So it's a long-term endeavor. This is not some quarterly soccer practice. This is a lifelong endeavor. Very few people even get to the black belt here after level three, which takes four to six years minimum. And then you can go on to your advanced degrees, second degree, third degree, getting into your fourth, fifth, sixth degree, and the different titles that you can earn if you stay long enough. Here's a cool picture of Bruce Lee talking about the importance of our voice in our training. And for legal and lawful purposes, when you're being filmed on a camera, you need to use your voice. If you're quiet, you need to fix that and get your voice out. Your voice keeps you breathing, keeps you from getting tired too fast, and it alerts the authorities that you are the good guy by yelling out the good things like, stop, leave me alone, I don't want any trouble. By you yelling those out as you're defending yourself, the crowd and law enforcement and lawyers, a good lawyer, will pick up on that and save you in a court of law. So we have Bruce kind of giving a key eye shout here, just reminding us, use your voice. It is a powerful weapon that can go through walls and up stairwells, and it can travel a whole mile. So use your voice in training. It's extremely important. How to pass your tests. A lot of people get scared. How do I do a test, a belt test? What do I, what do I need to do to prepare for that? So we have all the instructions here that tell you what to do and what the instructors are looking for. Dojo rules and safe training. This is very important. Safety on the mat. Awareness is a huge part of ninjutsu, is how aware of you of your surroundings. Can you see things happening and prevent accidents from happening? So this talks about your uke, what to do, um, saluting on and off the mat, as far as respect and tradition. It continues here, there are 15 points here. What should I be focusing on? So for our own personal training, here are bullet points of things that we should be asking ourselves week after week, month after month. How am I improving? What can I do? How can I engage in the school to find more information, to ask the right questions? There's a whole bunch of stuff here that I have found over the years that really help students attain their goals more smoothly and it kind of tells you the mistakes that I made and we as a team made. Requirements for advancement, this is important. What must you do to earn your next belt rank here? We have strict advancement here, talking about consistent practice, mental health versus physical health and how they're intertwined. They're inextricably woven together. You can't have one without the other. So we're always working on our mental health on the dojo as well as our physical health. And what will my classes entail when I join the dojo? What can I expect from each class and each teacher that teaches? We break up our curriculum here, at least in the modern curriculum. We have two curriculums. We have a modern and a classical. Unlike most schools I've ever been in who does one or the other, we do both. We do all of it, and that's why I love this martial art. It is so 
rich and deep with tradition. So I've taken several of my teacher's interpretations and put them in this book. Earth, we go by the elements here at the dojo. Why? Because it's easily explained and people in the West love the elements. It instantly is a good analogy to teach us how to move our body in a conflict. So we have five ways to deal with conflict. Not one, but five. And the first is Earth. This is where you start as at a beginner at our dojo. You start at white belt and you work your way up. This talks about Earth and the mentality behind it and the Eastern philosophy behind it. Then we get into our techniques. Each month has at least four techniques, one per week. It's broken down week to week. These I've written in first person perspective. So all of the techniques talk about I sink low in my stance. I deflect with my right hand. I strike with this hand. I kick with that leg. I move back into this position. By putting it in first person, I find that it's much more easily translated and much more easy for students to understand because they can visualize themselves doing these techniques. In Earth, we have about a dozen common attacks on the street. This is not sports. We have attacks like hook punches. Someone's choking you with two hands. Someone's grabbing you. Someone's trying to kick you. Someone's trying to punch you in the groin of the gut. Someone's coming in and grabbing your arm. Someone's tackling you to the ground, giving you a wrist grab and pulling you or pushing you. Someone's trying to punch you in the face with a jab. What do I do when they grab me from behind and try to get me in a bear hug? Or they grab my hair or my hoodie or my jacket. Grabbing your chest, what do you do with one or two hands? So these here are a year's worth of techniques that we repeat every three or four months so that you get muscle memory. You have to do these techniques hundreds of times so that they become part of who you are. And when you are attacked, you just go into them. The job is done quick and dirty and you can go on about your life. But if you don't practice these, they diminish over time. They go away, they disappear. Skill sets go away. So this is not just for level one, this is for all levels. Once you've completed at least a year at our dojo, you might go into level two, which is several ranks in, which is the water and fire element, what we call fire and ice. This gets into how to move your body. Here's a picture of Hatsumi at a younger age. Angling off, this angling in a fight is very high level, very unique to the samurai and ninja martial arts. So we talk about sui and ka here the lessons behind self-advanced protection. Here we go into our water techniques here. We have week one, week two, week three, week four for these different months here. So it's very clear, here's what we're working on today. Last night we had clear techniques. We're working on week three in January. And you just go and you look up the technique. Here's what you need to know, the name of it you have to memorize. And then we talk you into how to do it and then we practice this. Each class works on one technique for the whole hour. And then we do drills, punches, kicks, groundwork, and rolling a new kemi or weapons around that particular technique or principle. So we have all kinds of stuff here flowing through. This takes weeks to write this stuff. It's all technical, each technique. We go here into, let me just give you a couple of examples, hook punches, straight punches. Uh, how to move your feet, water, footwork drills. We work on ground defenses. We did this last night. Someone's in your guard trying to smash your face. How do you shrimp back and get distance? How do you topple them with your legs? How do you get into the top mount? And then how you can lock them out into various omoplatas and onikudakis and you name it, americanas. How can you apply these on the ground? Standing defenses against a headlock. Someone's trying to get you in a headlock. Someone's punching you two or three multiple punches. Someone's attacking you low. How can you angle back? Someone's getting you in a bear hug. How do you escape when someone my size grabs you in a bear hug? Above or below the arms. We have several methods brought to us with 500 years of battlefield training. Shifting against several punches inside and out. Someone grabs you and tries to rearrange your nose. How do you get out of that? Another straight punch defense. Going to the outside and pivoting with footwork. Wrist locks, we go into basic and advanced wrist locks. Grabbing, sui no kata, there's a classical one there. We have a fire straight punch, how to fire in, how to throw someone five different ways, how to cut them down with a riminage, which is kind of an Aikido principle. First strike, how to do a first strike when you know someone's closing the distance. How do I get that first kick 
or that first punch off with the element of surprise. All of these principles take years to master. Of course, you can never master them, can you? Hook punch defenses. We have ground leg locks here. Someone's trying to kick you. Forward kick, side kick, roundhouse type of kick. How do I get inside that? Sweep their leg and take them to the ground. What if someone's pulling me? How do I go with that energy? Someone's trying to choke me on the side here on the ground. How do I escape when someone my size is trying to choke you? Grabbing your lapel. We have various leg sweeps, also togaki, and all the classical ones that you're familiar with. After that, which is a huge chunk of time, six belt ranks, you go into level three. This is several years into our dojo. This explains the concept of wind. Wind is the idea of fitting in. It's very hard, very advanced, a lot of difficult footwork that you have to train. And this talks about wind and the art of emptiness, not being there when the person's attacking you. The differences between self-defense and fighting and martial arts in the ring and in sport. How is it different? What's our goal in martial arts? Are we going to become ring fighters? Or are we going to become someone who understands the law and has to defend his family, whether with or without firearms or weapons? We address all of this here at the dojo. Requirements. Here is what you need to know to get into the advanced ranks. Here's Hatsumi attacking the opponent with his fingers here. I tried to pepper in some pictures of my teachers here. How you become a dojo ambassador. If you're here for three or four years, you need to represent the school with a positive attitude. And what do you do when someone new walks in? Can you walk it over and make them feel comfortable and teach them the ways? Which is what a sensei is, is someone who has walked before you. Now we go into the level three techniques, more advanced. How to use your body to defend against punches of different kinds. Uh, how to break someone's elbow with different type of movements. How to crush the arms with onikudaki, whether it's on the ground, inside, outside, or a knife attack. Four or five different ways of doing that. These take months to learn. Someone's attacking you. How to use these traditional samurai stances or kamai to get offline and come in and defend. How to use chokes on someone. How to tap someone out applying pain to them and getting them to the ground, throwing people when they're tackling you, how to escape a full Nelson. Oh my gosh, there's so much. Four different types of wind grab escape. Someone's grabbing you, cross grab, one hand, two handed. How to pivot out of the way when someone's trying to punch or kick you and use your footwork. Defense against a stab to the stomach. Someone has a shiv and they're trying to come in and stab you. Can you take control of that knife? And then we talk about the legal ramifications with various law enforcement officers that train with us. How to apply chokes from behind. Here's Jigoro Kano. Those of you who do judo know that that's the creator of judo. This stuff's much older than judo and aikido and jujitsu. It's way older, way more effective. Well, they're all effective, but this is the old style. This is how you choke someone out with or without a gi, with a hadaka, or without. So these Sankakujime chokes are very powerful. They use them in UFC all day long. Ketsumiyaku, how to flip someone when they're trying to choke you, how to counter that. Using the rope and soft tools such as your belt or your computer straps or your cell phone charger, whatever it is, how to defend yourself with that. How to break someone's wrist in these different types of classical locks. Are you bored? I'm not. I could talk about this stuff all day long. Now, we go into wind defenses against straight punches. How to wreck someone's arm in a mushadori. Some call it goshadori. How to wreck someone's shoulder when they grab you and just pull it out of the socket. Here's Hatsumi doing it in the 1970s. How to escape from the mount. Someone's sitting on top of you, pummeling you, choking you. How do you get out of that? There are ways you can do it as a small person or an older person. This martial art, unlike many sport arts, adapts to your body type and your age. I don't care if you're 10 or 80. We have students in their 70s that train in this. This shows you how to use your body, your age, your weight, your height to your advantage to topple the opponent. Samurai warriors were notoriously short. They needed technique over strength because they know that strength and speed goes away as you get older. How to throw someone and sacrifice yourself and literally flip the opponent over your body. Great for small people. Another tackle defense, different types of wrist locks, classical, uda and omote. This was samurai-based 
takedowns of people with armor on, how to lock up the armor, but it works against modern attacks. You have ko uchigake, o uchigake, all these inside leg sweeps, these little tricky little sweeps here. Here's Arno, one of my teachers from France, and some pictures of him doing that kata. We have, oh my gosh, you guys, this stuff is endless. My God, you could go on for decades to work on this. Sanju Nagare, the 30 ground flow drill. This is 30 different techniques on the ground. Not one, not six, 30 different counters. Everything you can imagine from jujitsu is here. You have higher level focus. What is my purpose at this level, at the collegiate level? I've been doing martial arts now four or six years. What do I do next? How do I get to my black belt? What should I be thinking of? What are my goals in the future? And how can I start to start to coach and serve other people? My gosh, we're only on page 35. Brown belt requirements. We teach you here how to get your black belt. It's very clear. Each step, we help you along the way because people get scared. They get nervous. They have trepidations as they get higher in rank. All kinds of obstacles are going to come your way. I've seen it all. Here's the way to get through it. Brown white belt, brown belt, brown black. Here's what you need to do. You must take your history test. We require that so that you know the history of this martial art and its deep traditions. You can't go to a party and look like a moron because you can't even pronounce the techniques or how you move through life or you can't tell anyone any history about your martial art or their teacher's teacher. You need to know the tradition in order to respect it and be able to pass it on to people. You don't want to look like a dummy and not know anything about the history or the Japanese culture. It's very important. Feedback Saturday test. You have to come to certain tests. We did one last Saturday. We had one with 15 brown belts who came and they're working their way. They're working their asses off to get to first degree black belt. And it's a group effort. You're not alone. If you get there, if you get to your black belt, it's a wonderful achievement, but it's just one step. It's your first dan, called shodan, the initial step, the initial grade that you're moving through. You have 10 more to go if you want. What happens after I earn my black belt? This talks psychologically what happens after you earn your black belt. Things you're going to go through mentally and physically. How black belts often get lazy because they think they know what they're doing. They think they're arrogant and they're great on the mat when they really don't know much. As my teachers used to say, when you've earned your first degree black belt, it means you suck less. That's it. It's your first step. My job as a teacher is to show everybody that first degree black belt is a fantastic achievement, but it's just one step. You have to learn it, look at martial arts as a lifelong practice. It is not something you do casually for two years and quit for those who are serious. So this talks about the different degrees. Now, that's just part of our modern curriculum. We have an entire flip side of the coin here at the dojo. This is why we've been doing this for 15 years here and 35 extra. The classical Bujin Khan curriculum. We have the entire Bujin Khan that I'm licensed to teach. Classical Bujin Khan. All of this stuff is the old way of defending yourself on the battlefield of the Edo period, the Sengoku Jidai period, the Muromachi period, when people wore armor, had weapons, and wanted to kill you. This isn't about sport. So this is how you defend yourself against multiple opponents or single on the battlefield who might have weapons. All of this stuff teaches us the classical Japanese language, the different philosophies, all the different strikes, all the different kicks, how to block 15 different ways, the different stances of the samurai on and off horseback, how to use your body on the ground when you fall on the ice, how you roll and recover, back rolls, front rolls, side rolls, all kinds of different stuff. Then you have the chi, the yaku, the mid scroll here, the manual of earth. When you're encountering an opponent, they start to grab you, how to break their wrist, nine different ways, how to throw them 10 different ways. When they grab you, how do you counter that? How do you escape? Different types of chokes here, different types of kicks. There are dozens of kicks in this martial art, dozens of them. Different types of punch and kick defenses here. 
they're grabbing your clothing, they're grabbing your jacket, your arms from behind, how to counter throws, attacks from behind, defending against someone coming at you with a freaking samurai sword. This stuff is everything. The nine movements of Togakure Ryu Ninja and escape methods. Then you have your weapons. We haven't even touched weapons yet. The Jukubuki, how to use weapons. We have 19 different weapons that we teach at the dojo. Not one. 19. We can't possibly film even 1% and show you this stuff. That's why I love it. This is why students come here from all over. Because this school is kick-ass with this stuff. And if you're not addressing weapons, you're not doing, in my opinion, cold you true martial arts. Because if someone pulls a knife or a gun on you or a stick or a stone or a pen, and they come at you and you think you're going to get them in some sort of gatami on the ground or something, you are sadly mistaken. You must, in my opinion, throw in weapons training. It is extremely important for timing and distancing skills. What do we cover here at the dojo? We teach the spear, the naginata, the long sword, the ninja toe, the short sword, the small knife, the tanto, modern knife defenses, the kama, the sickle, the rokushakubo, the six-foot staff of the warrior, the jo, the medium staff of power, the hanbo, the short staff of the ninja, disarming people with handguns, how to use the baton like the police and law enforcement and how to counter it, the classical tonfa, yes, it's an Okinawan weapon, it's also Japanese, it was used on the farms, the kubotan, the short stick of self-defense, keychains, how to use the sai and the jute, the different truncheons that used to capture swords in the old day, the kusari fundo, the chain, the weighted chain, the kyoketsu shoge, the shuriken throwing stars, how to throw projectiles such as this lens cap to distract the opponent. And all of these are broken down. Here's battlefield. Look at Toshira Mifune here as Musashi. All the different battlefield sword kamai, the stances, the different types of cuts with the sword. We teach you how to take apart a sword. Oh my gosh, bojutsu, here's takamatsu with the bow. All the different stances of the warrior here, the different ways to defend with a six foot staff, the yari, the spear, how to use the naginata. Oh my gosh, there's so much to learn. And then we have charts here on pages uh, 46 through 49 different types of charts and wrist locks we have here in visual form so you can see how to do them. We have your different break falls, how you roll. We teach you how to do all of this here at the dojo. Here's a poem I wrote about becoming a black belt and there's a nice photo of Mrs. Hayes there, one of my teachers, to show the, the feminine power of our dojo. We have a large female population here and that's a healthy sign of a good solid dojo. This is fantastic to read as just something to keep us inspired. We have the nine rank requirements for youth belts. So for a youth student, you must do your chores at home. You must be respectful to your parents and get fairly good grades. We talk with your parents. You're not just gonna get a rank here. We're not that type of school. I don't believe in giving everyone a trophy because the world will eat you up if you do that. You have to earn your way into this world. You have to learn how to take pain. You have to be strong and you have to be self-sufficient. A little bit of Cobra Kai coming in here because you need that. We need to toughen up the next generation. And this does it. The seven virtues of Bushido. Even kids can learn about things like honor and duty and loyalty and courage and respect and integrity. These are things that, I, in my opinion, are sadly lacking nowadays with many, many young people. Not all, of course. My students are fantastic here. But it's our job as a warrior or martial artist of any kind to pass this on to our children so that when we die and go away, we can leave the earth to the next generation of powerful and compassionate individuals who will take care of this planet and everyone on it. Youth patches, youth can earn different sleeve patches. There are 15 of these that you can earn by doing various good deeds at home or in your community. Gosh, how, all kinds of different stuff. What are you doing? There's a fire at the house. How do you stop a bully with your voice? Um, how do you fall to the ground? What's a stranger danger? What is all that? Your different strikes you have to show. Are you disciplined? Can you learn your student creed? 
Um, can you do a split? How flexible are you? All this stuff is worked on here. Oh my gosh, it's endless. Here are some kamai. These are old drawings of Mr. Hayes from probably the 80s here. They still hold up all these years later. The different stances of the samurai, each one is explained in how the way you shape your body can defend yourself. Several pages of those. Six rules of the mat here. This is uh, safety again on the mat and things we expect you to do on and off the mat. What happens when things get tough, when you get frustrated and you want to quit? We talk about that. Nine different sword stances showing you here how to hold your sword and maintain it in battle. Why we practice martial arts. What's the difference between karate and budo? I explain this in the Japanese ways of thinking and how karate is part of budo. How martial arts is a giant bush and you have all the old style of koryu like we study and then you have all the modern arts like judo and aikido and jujitsu. Uh, all this new stuff that's come in the last 20, 30 years is standing on the giants and the shoulders of others. You can't have a modern martial art without seeing the roots of the tree. Now, once you get here, here's some admonitions from Hatsumi Sensei, who's 90 now, uh, and some different things that he talks about in his training. You have further educational opportunities here at the dojo. If you want to become a member of the Black Belt Club who meets every Saturday where we do our sparring and our difficult techniques, we put the gloves on, we sweat, we train together in much more difficult circumstances. This prepares you to become a Black Belt. You have your classical Samurai Budo classes which I teach every Wednesday at 7 o'clock. This is the classical stuff, the nine lineages. These books here this is just to show you the different books of techniques are not included in this. There are hundreds of techniques in the nine different lineages that this prepares you for. Going back, I know we're taking a lot of time here, but I'm hoping you are at least not sleeping yet at home. So the classical samurai class, every Wednesday we go over a technique from those books and we rip it apart, make it modern, and talk about why they created the techniques. You have your Tenchi Jin classes every Tuesday night. This is our fundamentals class. We have one today at 6 o'clock. Every Tuesday we all come in, white belt to high level black belts, and we go through the Japanese terminology. We learn all the different moves, what they mean, the kanji symbols behind them, and we practice the basics. Everything in martial arts is basics. The more advanced your technique becomes, the less likely it is it'll work on the street. All of us come in Tuesdays to train. We have our weapons classes every Tuesday without fail. We have another one tonight at 7, where every week or two the weapons vary. Coaching, teaching, and leadership opportunities. If you want to become a school owner, a coach, how do you become a trainer? How do you become an instructor, a sensei? How do you become a senior instructor? We teach you all of it here. It takes years and years. Here's a great picture of Danyo-san with the powerful Miyagi, which as you guys from watching Cobra Kai know, that's a good series, Zatuichi. And we have weapon certifications. Those of you out there who know about our DVDs, you can get certified in different weapons if you put the months and time and effort, blood, sweat, and tears in. You can become an expert in the battlefield sword, Edo period light sword, Iaido fast drawing, Bojutsu staff specialist, the Joe Staff Specialist, a Hanbo Specialist, a Knife Specialist, a Flexible Weapon and Chain Specialist, a Shuriken Projectile Throwing Master. You can't master it, but you know what I mean. Battlefield Spear Specialist. You want to become a Polearm, a Naginata Specialist, or a Classical Taijutsu Combat Specialist. All of these can be earned in different degrees and ranks that you can get here at the dojo. Kyusho Chart, my gosh, Pressure Points. We've been doing these for a year. Are these guaranteed to work? Hell no. But they actually help by knowing the weak points of the body. That's what Kyusho means. It means a, via, a weak point, a vital point, where you can hit someone and knock the wind out of them or break their bone. This is not sport. This is how to wreck the human body. It comes from ancient Chinese philosophies, and it works on most people. But nothing's guaranteed. That's why you have 10 different ways to defend yourself. More quotes by Hatsumi Sensei. How to break apart the samurai armor and the different parts of it. If you want to supercharge your learning, we have 
four, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fourteen DVDs that you can buy or order online or download or stream to watch about the different weapons and all the details. These are supplemental visual aids that go with our curriculum for those who are interested. And in the back of the book here, page 63 and on, we have a glossary of all the Japanese terms, hundreds and hundreds of the Japanese that we use here at the dojo, what it means so when you hear these words, you know what it means. You can plug it in and really understand the history of this beautiful and deep martial art. It just goes on and on from A to Z. Fantastic learning tool. Take you 20 years to learn it. And then you have a page here of more notes to write. Here's a picture of Kyuzo from the Seventh Samurai there. Back cover of the book here with this female kind of Onobugeisha warrior here with her bow and arrow. And this is our official study guide for in-house dojo students. Now the first thing people want to say is how do I get a hold of one of these? A lot of people want to buy one. You can't. And I'm not being coy and that's not being rude or disrespectful to you. The book would be completely meaningless unless you're training physically here at the dojo. We have books, all of us, right? And what do we do? We buy a book on a subject, we read it, but are we physically practicing what's in the book or does it eventually lose our interest and then it sits on a shelf like now, look around your room, you have books collecting dust that you haven't read in 10 years. The martial arts is a physical thing that you must do. You take a book such as our curriculum or any of these and you work it out on the mats with other people. I get asked all the time, can I do martial arts through a book, DVD, or a Zoom or something? The answer is yes and no. Yes, of course you can supplement with books, with teachings. They do help because a lot of people learn by visually watching, auditory learning, but physical martial arts must be done on the mat. You can't read your way to becoming a black belt. You can't zoom your way to becoming a self-defense expert. You must make contact with other bodies. You have to get physically grappling, get gloves on. You have to get on the ground with someone on top of you. You have to work with timing and distancing of punching. You have to practice your kicks and how to be kicked and how to take pain and the social aspect of the dojo. There's a thousand things that you need to do that you cannot do online for a long period of time. Yes, supplemental training such as any book or DVD is better than nothing. Anything is better than sitting at home and doing nothing and only commenting and wishing and hoping. But you can't learn how to swim if you never get into a pool. You can't learn how to do brain surgery if you only do virtual brain surgery. You have to physically get in there. How do I learn how to fly a plane with a book? You can't, you have to get in the plane. You have to get to your dojo, your local training hall. You have to get over your fear of getting in a social group. Get over that. Martial arts is about coming together as a team, as a nexus point, so that you can learn together with like-minded people. You will not be inspired for long on Zoom or in a book. You will quit. You will quit. It's just a matter of when. So I'm giving you advice here. Get to your dojo. Get hooked into your community. Develop a relationship with your teacher with your ukes and training partners. That way when you feel like quitting or you're having a bad week or a bad month, instead of going back to your page 10, you call your friend, you text your friend, you say, look, I can't make it today. I'm sick with COVID or something, or I've lost my job. I'm having financial issues. Can you help me? A community will come together and help you. That's what martial arts is about. It's about building a community. If you get our dojo curriculum book, it's gonna look like a foreign language to you because you're not here physically doing the kuden part. You're not hearing me, you're not training with me, you're not dodging my punches, you're not getting thrown by me. So how are you gonna learn what I'm teaching you through a book? It cannot be done for long periods of time. We are born in a world of technology. So we are used to, we are spoiled with technology and ungodly amounts of knowledge at our fingertips. 20, 30 years ago, all we had was books. Now we have the entire world in a little tiny phone. And what that does is it makes us lazier and it makes us quit things very easily and not know how to commit to anything and not work really hard to earn something because we're so used to having everything thrown at us and 
people trying to sell us things, that when you have to do something physical like a martial art where you have to get in your car week after week, month after month, that grit that you're building will not come from a screen. It has to come from inside. And those are the people that inspire me in my life. Those are the people that I want to be like, the people that have the grit and the determination. The old cruxy masters that have been doing it for 50 years before the internet. I don't want to be like someone on Twitch or YouTube. That doesn't inspire me. That's not real. That's a 2D easy world. The real martial masters that are on my wall are not internet people. They're people that I had to pay money to learn from, fly on planes and cross the globe to go to Japan and teach and train with. They're people that I had to relocate my entire life and being to become a student of. This stuff, as good as books and supplements are, cannot be translated through the page or the visual form. You have to get there and do it. I implore you, if you really want to do martial arts and you are loving it as much as I am, you will find a local dojo, create your own, anything you can do that physically gets people together to train. The training is the path. The path is the way. If you're not training, as all my teachers said, you are not of the way, you are in the way. The path, the dull, the way is it the training. The answers come through the training. The hardest questions we can ask in life will come through the training. Our teachers are just there to guide us on how to live a better life. That's all they do. Your teacher's not going to make you perfect. They're not going to fix your issues. They're not going to pay your bills. A teacher just guides me to where I'm going to try to be. My teachers inspire me. That's what they're there for. And if you don't have any role models in your life, a father figure, grandfather, grandmother, people that you look up to, they're dead or gone, or you never had them, you weren't born with such fortune to have a family, a martial art dojo can become like a family. And through thick and thin, these people will protect you and take care of you. And you and I both know deep down, none of us ever wants to feel alone or by ourselves or without purpose when we get up in the morning. Going to a training hall, a club, a group, somewhere where you can become part of something bigger than the self is, I believe, the key, the number one key to happiness in life. Thank you for spending some time with me today going over our curriculum. We're going to have it in soft cover books in the next few weeks. We've sent away for those to be printed. And we're going to make hardback book copies, kind of like a special edition for in-house students. If you're not an in-house student of mine, I do appreciate you taking the time to watch. Maybe you've gained a little insight into what we do here at the dojo when the camera is shut off. For now, you guys have a great day or night wherever you live. Please, please get back into action and get training as soon as you can. It's worth it, you guys. It's worth it. We'll see you guys soon. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.